I'm sure I'm not the only one who goes down the Tim Curry rabbit hole every November. You watch Rocky Horror for Halloween, you watch a couple of compilations of him on YouTube, before you watch Home Alone 2 at Christmas. This happened to me when YouTube suggested Over the Top, the sitcom Curry made with his close friend and next door neighbour Annie Potts. It was from promotional interviews from the time that I discovered that Tim and Annie met nine years earlier when they worked together on Pass the Ammo, which is the subject of today's review. Hello and welcome to Enchanted Essays, where I like to analyse films and the art of adaptation before screaming my findings into the digital void. I post reviews and video essays once a week, so if you like that sort of thing, you might want to consider subscribing. Past the Ammo stars the late Bill Paxton, in one of his first and few leading roles, as Jesse, a crook, and his girlfriend Claire, played by Linda Kozlowski. He teams up with some other career criminal hillbillies to steal the money that she was supposed to inherit from her grandmother before she donated everything to a televangelist. Said televangelist is the Reverend Ray Porter, played by Tim Curry. He uses claims of faith healing to persuade the Arkansas masses to send donations and vote for right-wing candidates in elections. He is joined by his wife Darla, played by Annie Potts, whose dedication to her god makes her seem a bit crazy to Porter and his investors. When the crooks get away is compromised, they accidentally end up on stage and decide to take the whole studio hostage as the charismatic Jesse starts to expose Porter to his own followers. Now, on paper, this premise seems perfect. However, its execution is mixed. The film tries to fit in too many characters and become more of an ensemble piece instead of focusing on the most original and intriguing relationships. Of course, ensemble comedies can work. I am a fan of Car Wash, a film that probably has twice as many characters, but they were ordinary people and the events are relatively mundane. There isn't a character that we're desperate to see more of. The cutting from place to place works well in the first act of the film. It constantly cuts from Ray Porter's glitzy, glamorous show, its clinical money operation, and the crook's poverty and disorganised planning. This quickly establishes a lot about these characters and the world they live in by constantly juxtaposing them with each other. The problem is that this continues throughout the rest of the film, introducing even more characters that the first act didn't set up, such as the sheriff, the investors, which we only saw briefly in act one, the governor of Arkansas and the chorus of viewers watching the show. Apart from maybe the sheriff? I wanted to see less of these characters. Whilst I understand that the investors are an important part of the political satire of televangelists, this aspect could have been exposited in half the amount of scenes, at most. I think the only character I saw the right amount of was Big Joe, the hillbilly crook with a soft spot for Darla who comforts her when her husband's venom is finally unleashed. He's not all that he appears to be and I see enough of him in the relationships between him and the other characters. I liked some of the stuff with the other hillbilly and the stoner who is broadcasting the show, but I didn't care about the subplot with his interest for one of the backing singers. I feel like it was just there so that they could have someone in a devil costume making out with someone in an angel costume, which isn't that funny to begin with, but even if it was, it would have worked better as a simple setup and payoff rather than a full subplot. Whilst there are no real weak links in the cast as far as acting is concerned, Curry and Potts are the absolute highlights. Obviously, I think they are two great actors who I already know have great comedy chemistry, but they are also the most interesting characters in the whole film. Darla is something of a tragic character. While she is complicit in her husband's crimes, she is primarily motivated by faith and her relationship with Ray breaks down over the course of the film. Porter is a villain that you just love to hate. He's fun to watch when he's having a great time and we're excited when he's destroyed. Right from the opening, which features Curry delivering a sermon in front of a green screen as he pretends to stroll through space. 
I knew that, no matter what the writing would be like, Curry's performance would be a delight. And I was absolutely right. So you can imagine how disappointed I was when there wasn't enough of him. I wanted more scenes of Jesse making him suffer and Ray manipulating those around him, which we only got a taster of in the final film. I liked the relationship between the two young lovers. Whilst the whole conflict of the girl wanting to get married is a bit overdone and could come off as a bit grating to some viewers, I found their relationship quite sweet. Rounding out the supporting cast is Sheriff Rascal Lebeau, a Louisiana cop played by Leland Crook, who tries to mediate and is as protective of the lives of the crooks as the lives of the hostages. The Cajun Sheriff is a likeable character, who basically takes the side of the audience, becoming one of those fascinatingly conflicted characters that is relatively neutral in a conflict and whose alliances could go either way. Personally, I think his scenes are all we really needed of the stuff outside of the studio, apart from a few scenes of the viewers at home. As for the humour, I think it mostly works. The satire is at its best in the first act, as we see clips of Porter's hyperbolic rhetoric and stage numbers that would make Broadway blush, almost reminiscent of Springtime for Hitler in The Producers. It only brushes this style of comedy for the rest of the film. I think that the jokes in general are okay, although there's one or two that have aged in the years since this film. Of course, if you get any humour from southern accents, you'll probably enjoy this a bit more. Obviously, I'm not from the States, let alone Arkansas, but I think Curry does a brilliant southern accent in this. The hillbillies at the beginning, particularly Joe and Arnold as the comic relief and Jesse and Claire as the likeable young couple, reminded me of Raising Arizona, which, coincidentally, came out the same year. This is ironic, as the film was co-written by Jill Cohen, who is probably most famous for being the man that Bill Murray mistook for Oscar-winning Joel Cohen of the Cohen Brothers when he signed up for the Garfield movies. His only critically successful film appears to be Toy Story, which he was nominated for an Oscar for, but he did write that alongside three other writers. It's a shame, because I think that this film shows that, beneath all of the bland but sometimes commercially successful kids' comedies he's made, there's the makings of a good writer in there. So, would I recommend this movie? For all of my Script Doctor-like comments, I would still say it is worth a watch. Just keep in mind that you will likely be left unsatisfied as the characters and premise never truly reach their full potential. If you're a fan of any of the actors in this, especially Tim Curry, then it's probably worth checking out for you. Like I said, this does remind me a bit of Raising Arizona, so it might be worth checking out if you want to watch something similar. Actually, I think this would be very interesting as a stage production. The televangelist's performances are very theatrical, the audience would have the thrill of being held hostage, and the fewer numbers of transition would make it far easier to focus on scenes between the most interesting characters. So, have you seen this film? Are you planning on watching it? What do you think? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. I don't usually recommend finding films through alternative methods, but as it has only had a VHS release, I've posted a link to a YouTube upload below along with a few of the promotional interviews. If you want me to make more content like this, you can let me know by liking the video. I post video essays like this every Friday, so be sure to subscribe if you're interested in reviews and analyses of books, films and more. If you want to be the first to find out the topic of my next video, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Enchanted Essays. Anyway, I think I need to go and find more Tim Curry films. See you soon! Have a lovely day.